Thank you very much. Uh, I am Ingun Grimstaklep and I am calling from um, Oslo, from the Consumption Research Norway here in Oslo. I would really very much like to be with you, but um, it's better this way, I hope. Yes, um, then we can um, start and um, I am asked uh, to tell you about uh, this uh, paper. It's called uh, Does Use Matter? Comparison of Environmental Impact of Clothing Based on Fiber Type. And it was published this uh, summer. Um, and um, yeah, it is, um, uh, it is a paper that uh, I worked together with uh, Kirsi Leitala here at CIFO and also Beverly Hendry. But before I start with the paper, I think I should um, present myself a little bit more and also the background for the paper. Uh, Norway uh, is a land with uh, sheep. Uh, we have a big um, country, not so many um, people, um, but we have uh, the value chain for wool uh, intact and that is a very good thing. And I have been working with a lot of different projects on, on wool and also on the value chain and I would love to talk about that to you today, but that has uh, to wait. Um, and uh, we have a project uh, uh, on this um, uh, now uh, and in, uh, in my heart I think it is uh, the wool that it is the beginning of this story I'm going to tell you. Um, lately we have uh, published on knitting history and on, on knitting recipes uh, and on, on wool yarn qualities and a lot of different topics in the project called Cruz. Mm, but earlier I have also been engaged with project where we have investigated uh, how the consumers uh, care for wool and how wool should be cared for, for instance whether it shrink with the temperature or with the by the the, the, the um, turn in the in the speed in the in the washing machine, and so on. So we know from before a lot about the consumers' habits and also how wool react to different treatments. Um, and we then are Kirsi, uh, my very good colleague here at CIFO, um, and also um, in this paper, also Beverly, which is working in Australia. Uh, and I am educated in ethnology, which is a very historical subject, and Kirsi is in basic uh, textile engineering, and she has been also working with design. She has a PhD in design. Um, before we started this paper, and, and, and for very many years, we have been working, Kirsi and I and others, with developing methods uh, for research uh, on, on, um, on clothing and wardrobes. Uh, and we have tried to find methods where we actually can say something more about the use phase of clothing. And in the beginning, um, this was not very much uh, connected to environment because the discussion about clothing and environment is actually quite new. Uh, but what we are doing is very much to ask a lot of questions, the same questions for each garment in the wardrobes. And this we can use for, for instance, saying something about why garments are discarded. Uh, this is from uh, Kirsi's PhD. Uh, and you can see that it is differences between women and men. Uh, fit is very important for discarding of women's clothing, twice as important as for men, for instance. So we can uh, um, give answers to a lot of different questions due to uh, through these uh, methods. Um, and last year we published also a method book on the different methods of uh, studying the wardrobe and studying how clothes are, are used. And uh, this is together with uh, uh, Kate Fletcher in London. Um, 
and this uh, work with the methods is important uh, for 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 as a background to understand this um, paper. Then uh, the paper is a part of a project that we have for the Australian wool innovation, uh, which is the wool industry in Australia. And you can see here the merino sheep, which make uh, money for the Australian wool industry. And they are a raw uh, material producers, first of all. And I have been there, seen the, the sheep, and um, it's very, very different from the small scale production in Norway. Uh, the wool, uh, uh, the Australian wool innovation is of course concerned about um, uh, how wool is looked upon regarding environmental impact. Uh, and uh, the next, let me call them players or um, in this story about the paper is the Sustainable Apparel Coalition. And this is a very forceful uh, coalition of the, um, uh, of the global textile um, industry. It is uh, actually um, one third of the apparel and footwear producing uh, companies worldwide that are um, going together here, coming together to make uh, to make change when it comes to sustainability. Um, but they have different kind of um, tools to make this change and to help the members um, becoming more sustainable and on, on, uh, in, in the future also uh, telling uh, consumers how to behave to become more sustainable. And one of these tools are the HIG uh, index. Um, they compare different materials, textile materials, based on an LCA, life cycle assessment thinking. Uh, and a bit funny thing is that wool comes out to be one of the worst fibers in these ranking systems. Um, this uh, uh, you can see with, with, with black hair is from a Norwegian NGO uh, picking up this stuff and presenting it in Norway with wool as the worst uh, when it comes to, to an, um, when it comes to CO2 emission. Uh, polyester is, is uh, just half as bad as wool. And uh, this is uh, this is uh, way of ran ranking the, the fibers is based on an on an LCA thinking, but the LCAs on wool are not taking um, the use phase into consideration, and there also uh, it's a lot of other issues in how the LCA actually are made that could be and will be discussed. And for Australian wool innovation, this is um, a serious threat to how they um, think about their market. So that's why uh, the Australian wool innovation asked us uh, to do this uh, project. Mm. And um, mm, for us uh, here in Norway, this discussion started years ago because uh, of this NGO. And we at CIFO and also the Norwegian people actually know uh, a lot about uh, why this can't be true. Uh, one thing is that the, the race in, in consumption of clothing is not based on race uh, increase in wool use, it's actually uh, an increase in the synthetics. Uh, wool has been very stable uh, as uh, silk and, and um, uh, and and it's 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 actually the the low price the fast fashion is very much based on synthetics and also uh, also cotton but first of all synthetics so it's a bit unfair to to blame wool while the real problem the race of amount of clothing is actually linked to another fiber Another thing is that we knew also that if you are looking to wardrobes, and we have looked a lot, to a lot of wardrobes in Norway, 
uh, it is um, the oldest garments uh, in active use is actually very often wool. It is the national costumes and it is a very much loved sweaters, Norwegian sweaters as you call them. We call them, them something else. Uh, actually, if it's nearly 16 years, the oldest uh, um, item in the wardrobe in, 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 um, in, in average. Uh, another thing is that the wool garments are washed less than other garments and uh, Norwegian um, children and also youth are uh, worn, uh, are dressed in wool underwear and wool um, close to skin garments like you can see the young um, woman there with, with the t-skirt in, in wool. And these garments are uh, washed less frequently and on lower temperature than um, um, cotton or synthetics. Uh, and this we knew. This was nothing surprising about this. We knew it from Norway. Um, but uh, what uh, the Australian wool innovation wanted us to do uh, is was to look at the uh, global knowledge about wool use compared to other fibers. So it was possible uh, to discuss whether the use phase should taken into consideration when we are comparing fibers. So we started up with a huge work looking at the, the whole global knowledge on use phase of clothing based on fiber. And we published uh, two reports and they can be downloaded from our website. Uh, the first one uh, is the use phase of apparel and the second one is microplastic pollution from textile. And um, it's a lot of numbers in these um, publications um, and I just picked out a few one uh, if you are just looking at it and looking at the, the states compared to other countries, Norway or Europe, for instance, you will see that you are some sort of worst case, I'm sorry to say, um, both when it comes to how often you are changing clothes uh, and also the energy use in your washing machines and your use of softener, that's terrible, and, and so on. So uh, it could be interesting to, to make uh, papers just on comparing different um, countries and also maybe also comparing uh, how we can change the habits in some countries more up-to-date or more best practices or more you know learn from each other but anyway this is uh, this is something that could be done uh, based on uh, on this report um, but what we have published is actually one paper on, on global hand washing habits uh, and then uh, this um, Mm, yeah, here is more uh, more numbers. It's a lot of numbers because uh, washing seems to be quite a, you know an easy task, but it's so many different parameters when you are trying to measure um, laundry. You know, different machines, different energy, different water use, differences in 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 a lot of different parameters and and. Uh, and very important the days uh, of use before washing. Yeah. Uh, so this is a lot of counting and we needed to count between uh, different uh, studies that has used different uh, uh, days or weeks or you know different kind of measures. So it was a lot of work uh, and it was not me doing it, it was Kirsi because she's, she's much better than, than me on most things. Anyway, uh, based on uh, the report, uh, we published this paper this summer uh, and it is an open access publication. And uh, the goal uh, seen from the, uh, the Australian Wool Innovation was to use the paper to argue that the use phase should be included in, um, in environmental uh, tools, environmental uh, discussions uh, about fiber types. Um, and uh, that has happened. Uh, so that is a very good thing uh, uh, for us. Uh, it is very uh, satisfying to see that to produce new knowledge uh, has an impact and are taken seriously. 
Um, yeah, the content on the in the paper uh, is then organized uh, around all these daily habits that we do not necessarily think about and very much take for granted. Um, it is part of the daily life for all of us on the globe, keeping clean, uh, keeping cl decent, um, present of self uh, for others. Um, and it uh, is organized uh, around the topics of washing temperature and program, microplastic pollution, drying, number of days before laundering, and also the lifespan of clothing, which are the most difficult and, and also mm, maybe um, most unfinished part of, of the paper. And, and I'll talk a bit more on each of these topics. Yeah, number of days before washing. Uh, it is, of course, different for different persons, but it's also different in different regions. You in the States are quite frequently washers. And um, it is different for different uh, garments and different for different garments in different materials. And what we have done is to try to give some numbers uh, in in uh, in average, when uh, based on the knowledge we do have today, we could have had better knowledge uh, for many areas of the world, but we have used what we uh, have, and what we can see is that wool is washed less than in other uh, the same garments in other materials, and I think that is also something that wool users in general know. Actually, airing is more efficient than washing when it comes to release the smell of sweat, which is the most important reason for washing for most people. Yeah. Um, drying is also a thing that makes a lot of energy use, or uses a lot of energy. And it can be done without any uh, uh, energy at all, drying outside. But drying inside in heated rooms or drying in machines, drying machines, or also energy are used for making uh, the surface flat, for instance, by, uh, what do you call it? I forgot the name. Strik uh, in Norwegian. You, you make it flat. Yeah you, yeah, you understand what I mean. You can see it on the, on the, on the screen. Uh, the habits here are very, very different, and it makes quite a lot uh, impact because it is energy use. Uh, then we come to the microplastic, uh, and the interest in microplastic is uh, uh, today uh, much stronger than it was just a few years, few years ago. And uh, because uh, washing of uh, synthetics releases microplastic into the into the, the, the um, water, into the, um, the water, uh, and into the sea, and actually are a, a substantial uh, contributor to microplastic pollution. Uh, we have added microplastic as an um, uh, effect of, of, of the use phase of washing, and argue that this should and could be included into the uh, into the LCA and into the way we are discussing different fibers uh, environmental burden. And after the publish of the um, uh, use uh, phase uh, paper that I'm talking about, we also publish another paper uh, and this is microfiber from apparel and home textiles prospects for including microplastic in environmental sustainable assessments. And this is also open access and uh, down, so you can download it, it's, 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 it's very fresh. Uh, and it is uh, talking about the knowledge, up to, the up-to-date knowledge on microfiber, microplastic pollution and also on uh, the contribution from textiles. And we argue then that it's possible to start to take this into account when different fiber are compared. So we have uh, something about the microplastic in the use phase uh, article, uh, the paper I'm talking about, but we also have another paper, especially on this subject. Yes, 
then we have the life of the garments. And I have to say that this is the most important and also a very difficult uh, subject. And um, in LCA, um, we should try to use the functional unit, that uh, a garment has a purpose. The things is not just produced to be sold, but they also sold to make, um, to be used for something. For instance, keep a person warm or beautiful uh, or satisfied. Um, and here you can see a jacket. Um, the, the color photo is my son, he's called Olva, and he has a jacket. Uh, and this jacket is, uh, was, wo wo uh, was bought by the guy on the, on the other side. Um, so the jacket is around 60 years old. It's an army jacket. Uh, I guess you recognize it. Um, and the thing is that uh, even though it's very old, it hasn't been worn the whole time. It has been worn uh, in the beginning, in the 40s, and then in the 70s, I think also in late 80s, and then again uh, of my son uh, some years ago. Uh, and I think it has been washed twice, maybe something more, but not very many times. Um, when you are talking about a, a life of a garment, very often this is measured in years. And as you can see here, years doesn't make sense. Another way of talking about it is about days. And that makes more sense. But if you have a swimming suit, maybe hours is, is more correct. Um, and sometimes it's actually also uh, measured in number of washes, which is some very difficult because then it depends on how often you are using it before you are washing it. So to measure the, the functional unit is, uh, we have to talk, start to discuss how to measure use when it comes to clothing. And uh, use of clothing is very much dependent on the uh, amount of clothes in the wardrobe. If we wear, a, if we own a lot of clothing, which very many Western people do today, uh, their clothes get older because we are using them less frequently. Uh, a big, big wardrobe will also say that the, the garments become old before they are worn out. So the problem of the social or aesthetical um, uh, age become more present than it has uh, in, used to be. Mm, so uh, on the other side, uh, if a garment are old and used a lot, um, the, pro uh, the environmental burden of the production becomes less if you are looking at each wear as a unit. So uh, the lifespan, the amount of clothing and the uh, burden of each wear, if you can use that word, is actually very much linked together. That's why uh, the lifespan or the functional unit is a very important um, topic and a topic I hope we will work on uh, in the future as well. Uh, yes, um, here you can see the picture that uh, it is a picture made of a Norwegian artist in my youth and it made a big impression on me on, on, on a lot of other people and it was a political art protesting against the Vietnam War. The most famous picture about that in Norway. Uh, and on the other side, you can uh, see a sweater that is made of an old Norwegian breed. And it is the first time we have a production of a garment in that uh, specific wool. So this is uh, like a victory for us. Um, and I will sh I show you these very different pictures because I think that the discussion in this paper. It is like uh, war uh, in the way that uh, we haven't decided to, uh, to talk about clothing in this way, to compare them based on fiber. Uh, actually, uh, I will say that fiber um, contributes to around 50% of the production cost if you are thinking environmental um, and that is quite little uh, and I think that all garments 
uh, um, should be discussed uh, what they does to us, what we can use them for, how we can um, manage to, to create a, a production and use of clothing that is much better. So I didn't choose the way this um, uh, discussion is, is uh, formulated. Uh, so I didn't decide that fiber should be the way that garments are, are, are compared. But at the same, uh, but at the same time, this is actually happened, happening. And as a researcher, I I think we uh, have to contribute to 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 the discussions that actually are going on. So I feel this like uh, like um, battle. Uh, I feel it like I have to do something uh, in a very important discussion now. I would like, I would have preferred that we discussed and said, how can we produce all fibers, all garments, all things, best possible way? And how can we think about the future of clothing um, after the fast fashion, which has to close down? But how should we uh, organize it? How should we, you know, how can we make people beautiful and satisfied and warm and secure with the much lower environmental impact. And this discussion is not nearly, I mean, we just started, we are really just started. But, but at the same time, it's necessary to, to take part of the discussion that is going on. And especially when they are actually going in on full speed in wrong directions. So um, here I am I again, not so far from where I'm living. And, and with these pictures, I will say thank you, uh, Fibershed, and thank you, Rebecca, for having me talking to you. And I'm also uh, very happy that uh, you appreciate the paper. Um, it is um, um, a big pleasure as a researcher to be read and also that uh, our um, work makes um, uh, an impact. Uh, and uh, I think that this paper, even though I would have preferred to work with environmental um, questions very differently, I think maybe it has been one of our biggest um, professional victories. Thank you very much.